This video tutorial is all about making a Christmas stocking using my um, personal Christmas stocking pattern that I designed for my daughter shortly after she was born, my first child. Um, and although the pattern comes with a full step-by-step -step photo guide, um, I find it's always good for um, projects to have a video tutorial accompanying them in case the photo guide and the instructions don't make as much sense as we would like them to. So for this um, project, I'll talk you through what materials you're going to need. But you can see um, before I do that, what the basic component parts of the of the project actually are so that you can start to get a sense of how everything um, assembles together. If you are making this stocking using the PDF print at home A4 pattern file, then there is a video um, I have made that explains how to assemble that, which I will link to in the, um, in the comments of this video. Um, but alternatively, you can do as um, I have done with mine, which is just send the A1 pattern file off to uh, the coffee shop to have that printed and posted back to you. Um, I find that the sort of couple of pounds at that costs um, sort of negates the time that it might spend printing off an A4 pattern piece. But although I have to say that um, with a stocking, it's only a, a few A4 pieces, I tend to do that much more with full dressmaking patterns. Um, right, so let's look at what we need to get into stock in order to make our stockings. So before you make your stocking, you're going to need a selection of fabrics. Um, so here I have got um, an off cut of a lovely dark green linen left over from a dress I made for a customer and then an another off cut here um, of the cotton I used to line that self same dress so I'm going to use that for lining and then a couple of quilters cottons that I'm going to use for the cuff and the um, main body of the stocking um, you can really use anything as long as it's a woven fabric um, and you can, um, if you want to use a stretch fabric, you can interface it. But really, the, the, the pattern is designed for a woven for a woven fabric. In addition to your fabrics, you're also going to need some trims. So I have half a metre of red pom pom trim and half a metre of jumbo rickrack here. So this is this wavy braid is called rickrack and this is a, the jumbo size and you'll see why jumbo is needed when, when we get to that step in the assembly. And then this is completely optional, but um, I like to use a bit of butcher's twine um, of a sort of thick variety to create faux piping in the seams on the toe cuff and the heel. So this is optional, it's not mentioned in the instructions, but I will be using it for this one because I really like the effect of it. Once you have assembled your fabrics, you need to cut your pattern pieces. So we have the stocking heel here um, which I've cut in the green linen so there's two of those and the stocking toe which I've also cut in the green linen there and then the cuff piece you need to cut two in the main fabric and also two in the lining so for me the main fabric is the red <clears throat> quilters cotton and then I've got two in the green lining and then the main body of the stocking in one um, fabric. So for me, it's the the robins, um, the robin the robin fabric, which is so jolly and Christmassy, but also unusually Christmassy. I really love it. And then this full stocking piece is for the um, the lining. So you need two of those as well. So it's basically two of everything because obviously, as you are assembling the 
the uh, the stocking you need to be able to make a front and a back once you have done that cut everything out the first step is to take your stocking main stocking body pieces unpin and you need your toe piece as well and you're going to for each of your stocking pieces you're going to take a toe piece and stitch it right sides together along the straight seam down here so you you are going to make a seam one centimeter in all the seam allowances are one centimeter on this pattern make a seam allowance one centimeter in and um there are there are, you can see here that there is a notch on the pattern piece to help you get the toe piece the right way up for it to be able to create the shape so do that on both of your toe pieces and then press the seam open so here I am back with the toe portion stitched to the stocking uh, main outer and I'll just show you that the seams are pressed open on the on the insides like that that just helps reduce the bulk um, so the next thing we're going to do is take the heel section of the pattern um, and put that on the heel section of the stocking outer again you will see that there is a a little notch there and there is one on the pattern piece as well that is to help you orientate yourself when it comes to um, inserting this so you should start by lining up the two notches um, with a pin and then gently easing that curve the curve of the stocking outer the main body of the stocking around the curve of the um, the curve of the heel piece now I have got a slight issue here in that the linen that I'm using has a very very loose weave and is very unstable and the quilters cotton I'm using is very very stable so I'm having to do a little bit of fiddling in order to be able to get the heel piece to align nicely but that's the purpose of the balance mark the notch also known as a balance mark which is to help you get everything lined up nicely you can see that I'm just about managing to do that if you're making this out of sort of unstable fabric like a linen a walking foot may well come in handy but it's not essential so that's that all pinned in in that corner and again I'm going to stitch at a one centimeter seam allowance on, on both pieces to get that heel portion into the main um, body of the stocking. So here is my stocking uh, outer, one side of it, with the heel piece also inserted. You can see I managed to ease that in. And I have also notched the seam allowances and pressed them open. That's just got a bit cool. I'll press that again, but you can see I've pressed that open. This is the point where, if you want to, you can use the butcher's twine to create a faux piping effect just to bring out that line. So all I have done is top stitch the butcher's twine into the seam line using a, a zigzag. In this case, it's a 3.5 by 3.5 zigzag. Um, I've done it very quickly, so it's just slightly off there. But um, if you take a little bit more time over it, you'll be able to get that really, really nice and neat. Um, and it's just a really, you can see the, 
the difference like I'm not sure once the stocking's made up you'd necessarily notice that it's there but as a detail it really just ties the two sections together and, um, and, and adds a bit of extra texture so that's the point where you would do that once you have your two stocking pieces finished you need to stitch them together right sides together line them up at all of the notches that you've cut in um, and stitch them all the way around from this edge, this top corner, all the way down along the curve, around the toe, around the heel and all the way up to this corner. You need to leave it open at the top. So don't stitch this straight line at the top. Once you have stitched all the way around your stocking, you want to very carefully notch inside the curved parts. You don't need to notch the straight edges, but inside the curved parts to um, be able to release some of the excess fabric um, or remove excess fabric on the um, on these outer curves to so that when you turn it through you have removed the excess fabric from where the seam allowance is folding back in on itself and that should enable you to have a nice flat um, finish around your seam edge when you press it so you need to just take take the excess out of the outer curves like this um, and again here and then where you have curves going inwards like this you just need to snip into the seam allowance to be able to release the seam allowance release the fabric within the seam allowance so that when you turn it through um, the seam allowance will fold nicely back in on itself once you've done that need to turn the whole stocking through a little bit of stray butcher's twine there um so turn the whole stocking through and then give it a really nice steamy press so here is the stocking turned out and pressed all around the edges and you can see it's really starting to take shape now so you can set that one to one side for a minute the next thing you want to do is stitch your lining pieces together, right sides together, um, and repeat that exercise. But remember to leave a two to three inch gap in one of the straight seams. It doesn't really matter which one. I tend to do it on the outside seam. So just leave a two to three inch gap on one of the straight seams there and then stitch one centimetre all the way in and all the way around the edge. You don't need to do any notching and you don't need to turn it through. The lining will stay as it is. So then you can fold that one to, to, and together and put it to one side. And the next thing we're going to do is start working on our cuff, stocking cuff. So you need to, with both the stocking cuff pieces and um, the stocking cuff lining pieces stitch both of the rectangles that you've cut together down one of the short edges with a one centimeter seam allowance and then open them up give them a press um, and you're pressing the seam allowances away from each other again all right now i'm going to take the lining piece and just set that to one side for a minute and then i'm going to turn the um, outer piece so that the right side is facing us and now we are going to work with our brick rack and our pom-pom trim so to start you need to if your pat if your cuff piece has a directional pattern you need to work out which is the top part of your cuff and which is the bottom part of your cuff um, so that's if you have a, a, a pattern on your print that um, needs to be looked at a certain way up. So make sure when you put your stocking cuff piece in front of you that you um, have the pattern the way up that you want to have it or at least you've you've identified what is top and what is bottom of this long strip that is making the cuff. 
We're then going to take our rickrack trim. So for me, this is the bottom of my cuff. I'm going to take my rickrack trim and I'm going to pin it all the way along the edge so that it sits just inside the one centimeter seam allowance. So when we are stitching, if I show you, we will be stitching one centimeter in and the seam will just catch above this curve here. If I uh, zoom in, I can show you what that looks like. So the seam, the stitch line is going to stick is going to be just inside just above this curve here so that when this is turned through what you get is the loops of the rickrack poking through it gives you essentially a faux scallop edge and we're going to do that all the way along so here i am with the rickrack trim stitched into place if i just zoom in you can see where the stitching is like that and we are now going to apply the pom-pom trim in much the same way so the pom-pom trim is going to be with the pom-poms facing up on the right side of the um on the right side of the cuff and then you just need to line the trim up so that the trim part of the pom-pom trim so that the um the braid is sitting within the seam allowance so it essentially just touches the the uh, the stitch line you've already made and we're going to stitch that in place like that using a um you can use a straight stitch but i find a zigger stitch is a little bit more secure and a bit easier to handle so here i am back again with the pom-pom trim all stitched on and I'm just going to trim the excess off the ends like that and we are now going to stitch the I might do it this way around because there's a little bend in the bottom there stitch the lining piece on so you're sandwiching um, stitch the lining piece on again over that same seam line stitching one centimeter uh, from the from what is the bottom I've got it turned around but if I turn it around this way you can see so it's we're stitching one centimeter from the bottom and sandwiching the uh, trim inside the lining and the stocking cuff outer pieces so I have stitched the lining in place once you've done that you want to turn it through and um, make sure the lining at the back is all properly rolled out so you've got no massive overhang and it's all as aligned as you're going to get it and then give it a really nice steamy press again and you can see what a great um what a really great finish that gives you the layering of trims just really adds some movement and some detail in order to complete the cuff we then open that up again and we're now going to fold it from end to end and stitch at a one centimeter seam allowance again from this end to this end of the um, stocking cuff. You may find if you have a pom-pom that's in the way, you might want to just trim one side of it or, or, or trim it off. Here is the cuff stitched down that short edge. And then what we do is fold the cuff outer up over the lining so you can see you have a continuous continuous um, cuff piece you can get your arm through which will be the top of the stocking um, and once you've done that again give it a press if you find that you have a little pucker there um, as I have, you might want to just go in and chop off the excess trim that is inside that seam because that's causing a bump, um, an unpleasant bump and making it quite hard to, um, to
to fold back. I've also caught the um, I've caught the rickrack in there, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it doesn't matter quite so much. Um, so and it and it won't really notice. So once you've done that, give it a press, and then we will move on to assembling the whole stocking. So here I am with my cuff piece pressed and essentially finished and I've now picked up the main stocking body so we come back to that now and we're going to attach the cuff to the stocking body. So you want to take the finished cuff piece like this essentially so that you can see inside it and get your arm all the way through it if you need to and insert like this the stocking to the cuff so you can start to see how this is going to uh it is how this is going to come together at this point you also want to open up the top of your stocking like this so that you can get your arm all the way down and inside it and line up the, the seam on the inside and outside edges of the assembled cuff with the seam on the inside and outside edges of the um, stocking itself. Once you've done that, just work around. This, it should line up nicely. Just work around and make sure that everything is all in alignment on the other side you might just want to stick a pin halfway around so that you don't at all get confused with the fact that we're now sewing in a in a continuous line around the inside of the top like that okay and that's what we're going to do next so the cuff is um the cuff is attached you're going to use the sleeve arm of your machine the free arm of your machine um, which all machines should have, though not necessarily all machines will fit fit this, but it, in theory they should. And we're going to stitch at a one centimetre seam allowance, or a little bit more if you if you want to make sure you've got all the layers caught up. It doesn't really matter at this stage now. Um, but try for a one centimetre seam allowance in from this edge all the way around the outside of the cuff with the machine free arm going through so that you are basically stitching around the loop. Sometimes when people make this they just accidentally stitch across the top like that and what that means is you can't get into your stocking so you don't want to do that. We are, we're stitching around the top of the stocking part um, now before we go on to um, attach the lining. So I have stitched the cuff, just going to take the pins out. Like that, and you can see that that is um, nicely attached out and all in alignment. If you want to attach a hanging loop to your stocking, now is the time. So you can take a little off cut of your rickrack or some ribbon or anything else you might have um, and you take the outside edge of the, the cuff and the stocking so going down to the the heel portion fold your rickrack or ribbon or trim or whatever it is that you're using in half and align it down the seam like that and just pop a pin into place there and quickly just top stitch backwards and forwards over the seam line just to secure that in place. So you can see that that hanging loop is now attached and you can get a sense of how that's going to work on the outside edge of the stocking. And then the last piece of the puzzle to attach is our lining piece again. So um, at this point, we want to open up the whole lining piece of the stocking and just really open it up get your hand all the way down because you you're going to 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 utilize the full length of the stocking and then put your main stocking piece over your arm and push it 
all the way down inside the stocking lining like this. Make sure it's all really nicely aligned at the end and at the heel. And then right up to the top seam. And then we're going to repeat that process. So we have this opening here and the plan is to line up the side seam of the stocking lining with the side seam of the stocking outer and again the side seam of the stocking lining with this, the opposite side seam. Put a pin in place so I'm on the, the bit where I have my hanging loop. And then again around the, oh I've got two pins there, that's helpful, around the top of that on either side so that you have essentially your main stocking inside your lining and a, and a big open loop here. Now I appreciate for those of you that don't know what we're going to do next this this is going to seem <coughs> quite bizarre what we're doing but we're about to, to do a little bit of bagging out magic. So once you have um, pinned the lining to the outer like this you're going to again stitch at a one centimetre seam allowance all the way round so that you're using your machine's free arm and you're sewing in a continuous loop all the way round so that you still have the opening of the stocking here. So I'm back with the stocking all stitched up around the top there and that um, the inside of the the stocking visible so I can still get my hand right down inside as if I was Father Christmas stuffing it although I do admit at the moment it's not a very attractive thing to look at but that this is where the gap in the lining that you've made comes in so now we're going to open up that little gap and pull the stocking outer through the lining like this so that we are turning the whole thing back to its right side and at this point you have something that looks like two stockings Siamese stockings kind of attached around the top part of them like Siamese babies attached at a body part so I have turned the um, I've turned the lining through very roughly because it doesn't need to be particularly brilliant and you can see that we're back on our main pretty stocking. Fold the cuff back down like that okay and then at this point we need to push the lining back down inside the stocking and then immediately you can see oh I've left a little pin in there in my haste just pull that out because that's not going to be a nice thing for Father Christmas to find on Christmas Eve you can immediately see that you have a nearly fully finished beautiful Christmas stocking which is fully lined and all you need to do is just you can pull the lining back out again temporarily and close up that um, inside seam where you had the hole either with a little bit of machine top stitch or um, a hand stitch ladder stitch or slip stitch whatever you prefer if you'd rather close that up by hand but once that's closed up you have a fully finished Christmas stocking um, I love this pattern. I it, I have such kind of a sentimental attachment to it because I, when I had my first baby, I really, um, I really wanted to sew her a stocking that would last her throughout her whole childhood. And then when I had my subsequent child, I also used the same pattern for that. And I designed this. Um, I designed this for Eliza. So it's really lovely to see other versions of it coming into existence, and um, it just lifts. The traditional stocking that's just all one piece into something 
um, with a little bit more detail and room for personalization. You could always applique um, the, a motif onto the stocking before you assemble it or embellish with some embroidery um, and some beading. There are sort of multiple ways you can do it. And, um, and I have great fun always when I choose to make more of these going to the quilt shop, um, quilting shop near where I live and just spending hours partnering fabrics with each other and trying to work out what's what. Um, but I made this one out of um, scraps from my stash. Um, so it just goes to show what a versatile pattern it is. You don't really need that that much in the way of fabric. So I really hope you enjoy making it.